Microsoft Excel 2010 if function. Now in this worksheet, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the commission amount for our four salespeople if they meet a certain goal. So the if function enables you to perform a calculation only if a condition is true and a different calculation if it's false. So let me give you an example of what we're going to do here. We have these totals from these four salespeople. We would like to give them the 15% commission if they make the $1,800 goal. So if they don't make the $1,800 goal, then something else is going to happen. So when you're starting to build these functions that have multiple what we call arguments, or steps that you need to perform, you don't want to just start typing it in. What you want to do is you want to get some help. So if you look over here, we have a couple of different options. I typically use the FX button, which is found right here next to your formula bar. But you also can go to formulas and you can get there right here with this big button here. Or you can get through the drop down with more functions or you can even go through the function library. So there's several different ways to actually get to the FX or insert function dialog box with all of our functions. So I'm going to go ahead and click, make sure you're in the correct cell, click FX. And then from here, we have a couple different options. If you're not quite sure what function you want to use, then you type in a brief description. And based off from that description, Excel will come up with some functions. So you'll see a list of functions here. Another thing that you can do is you can click on the drop down and choose a specific category out of the library, or you can choose the all command and you'll see every single function in alphabetical order. As you click on any of these, you will see the syntax below that explains what the function's purpose is. So this one's going to check whether a condition is met. So it's a test and it's going to return one value if true and another value if false. So really what we said is if this is greater than or equal to this, we will apply the 15%. If not, we're going to give them zero. So that's what we're looking for. We want to make sure that they have met that commission goal. So we do want the if function. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And here is the argument. So these steps, they call them arguments. So you can see that we have three arguments here in our function argument box. And the, the good thing is, even if you're not sure exactly what you're supposed to do here, is you just click in one of the boxes and then you look down here and the syntax is going to tell you what you need to put in there. So right now the logical test is any value or expression that can be evaluated as a true or false. So again, we just have to give it a test. It's, we're not going to create a formula that's going to do something. It's just going to test and this is how we're going to do it. We're going to say if, and we don't have to put the equals if in because that was already done for us. We're going to say if this cell, Wilson's total, is greater than or equal to this 1800. If I was to just let this continue going here and I was to copy the formula down after, what's going to happen is, is yes, we're going to move to the next row, the next row, and so on, but so isn't this. And we cannot have that $1,800 move out of this function as we drag down and copy the formula. So we need to use the F4 function key. So the F4 function key with the marching ants around there will put the currency symbol in around here. The other thing we could have done is we could have named these two cells and then we wouldn't have had to do, have done that. So here it is. We're just saying is F5 greater than or equal to G2 as an absolute value. Okay, you're done, you're done with the test. It either is or it isn't. Uh, greater than or equal to. So now if it's true, what are we going to do? Well, if the value is true, then we need to have some kind of formula or calculation. So what we're going to do is we're going to take Wilson's total and we're going to multiply it by 15%, giving that person 15%. But again, we cannot have, as we drag this formula down, we cannot have that 15% move down along with the formula. So we need to make it an absolute value. Again, we have the marching ants around here. I'm going to hit the F4 function key and that will lock down that particular cell, both column and row. Now this one is a true statement, we know that, because obviously 2513 is greater than 18. Here is the result, and I haven't even put the false statement in yet, and again it's going to return a value of 376.95. As far as faults go, there's a couple different things you can do. You can put a number in there, or you can type text. Now I'm going to put zero in there, so that's what they're going to get for a value if they do not meet the true statement. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, and you'll see, of course, that this one already has met it, and let's copy this down. 
I'm going to go ahead and double click my last answer just to see what it looks like. We've got some relative and some absolute values here. You can see as we drag down here, we're in row eight and we do have Morgan's total. And notice that our sales goal and our commission rate did not move as we drag down. Thank you for choosing LogOnToLearn.com, educating the world anytime, anywhere.